have a lot of search volume, meaning a lot of people search for it. Because you might think that this is a good keyword for your business, but if nobody searches for that keyword, it doesn't really do any good. So you want to use different tools like the Google Keyword Planner. It's a free tool from Google. Show you how many people actually search for that keyword every single month. So then you can say, okay, this is a good one, or maybe I should use the singular or the plural or a synonym or some variation that. Visit Vegas Places, your host Coil. SEO, social media, pay ads, Google search. Who's receiving ROI? Uh, if you want to know, this is the episode for you. Um, now, who's really getting a return on investment? My guest today knows. E commerce guru helps small and medium sized company rank at the top of Google by using a search engine optimization tactics and bringing in traffic via social media, paid ads, which in turn converts into clients leads. I have guest Brandon Lebowitz, an owner and operator of SEO Optimizer. How are you doing? And I want to thank you for joining me, Brandon. Thanks for having me on today. All right. SEO Optimizers. What what made you come up with the name? Just trying to find a URL I could get that wasn't taken. Because I do <laughs> SEO, so trying to get the word SEO in there and just trying whatever I could and found SEO optimizers is available and just grabbed that one and yeah, no real meaning beyond that one. Just trying to find a URL that was available back in I think like two thousand seven, two thousand eight about the URL oh. somewhere around there. So Wish I bought more of them back then. Even then, it was tough to find a domain name, but now it's even tougher. I bet. I bet. And um, that was the first thing of, I thought, too, is just like, how did he pull that off to have that name and also the website, which is cool. It's a very smart man. I want to definitely get straightforward with you. How does this search engine SEO works, and what are the tactics where I can trigger it to work for my business? Well, there's a lot that goes into SEO. It's not really a one-size-fits-all. Every website's different, but... For the most part, Google's looking at a few different things like content, making sure you have good original content on each page. The more content you have on each page, the easier it is for the search engines to read that content, like text, not images or videos, but actual text. They need that content to read that page and understand what keyword you're focusing on or what the intent is behind this page. But mm -hmm. yeah, so that on every single page, you need to put content on each page on your website. Every page needs essentially about 400 words of content, but Google doesn't really care what you put on the website. They see all these changes that you make to the website, but they just don't trust anybody. So they see, they want to see what are called backlinks, which are other websites talking about you. The more websites that talk about you, the more trust Google's going to give to you. And then they're going to look at the keywords on your website to figure out what to rank you for. But it doesn't work the other way around. Backlinks and content on the pages, those two things alone are really the more important, bigger pieces of SEO. There's a lot of other aspects of it, but those two, if everyone just adds more content to their website and builds some backlinks, I can almost guarantee they'll see a jump in traffic. Wow. Now, um, SEO services, of course, on his website, Brandon's website, you can book a free SEO website consultation, and that is priceless, especially in this world of consumers, small business owners. Uh, you know, we thrive off of free social media uh, marketing. Um, Brandon, this is uh, vital information for small and big businesses to attain. And uh, you do offer on-site search engine optimizations, uh, which ensures uh, a positive ROI. And uh, we all love a return on investments. And I want to focus on your services, Brandon, and um, how it lists down on your website as far as the start of the reputation management. Um, let us know what um, it involves with the reputation management. That one is just like I could rank websites. You could also kind of push stuff down Google and hide stuff. So if there's any negative PR and things like that, you could try to suppress it, which becomes a little tricky. Usually someone has negative stuff. It's for a reason. So try to steer clear of it. But every once in a while, like if someone gets like a speeding ticket or something or like a DUI, they might take a picture, put it up on this website, like mug shots, and then like anyone searching for you, like a new employer, they see this mugshot and it looks really bad. So hiding stuff off Google, just like I can rank it, I can kind of push it down by ranking more stuff above that. But oh. it's a little weird and 
some stuff is a little tricky, so I'll try to steer clear but for the most part. But every once in a while, there's something like that where it just this shouldn't be there. This website's just trying to capitalize on people saying, "Pay us five thousand dollars and we'll take the mugshot down," which is mm-hmm. kind of shady. Of them, but they're making a whole business out of it, and yeah, it's that's 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 good stuff it, that's good knowledge ignorance is definitely bliss here i am thinking when you started i'm thinking like bad comments <laughs> if somebody make a bad comments that is a whole different level which you just explained that a business owner doesn't even think of like i didn't even think of that until i just heard it literally from you saying it broken down just like that and that is important yeah no you don't want to gotta be careful you never know with your digital footprint or what people are posting or people could put fake stuff about you. So then you got to clean that stuff up as well. So you never know what's being put out there until you search and see, search for your name, search for your business, search your phone number, all that stuff. And you'll see some, right. some weird stuff might pop up that you want to kind of suppress it. <laughs> That's right. Now you have your next service is the keyword research. Um, if I wanted to um, have some knowledge on a keyword research, um, how would you explain that to one? Well, so that's finding keywords that you want to rank for. So when you search in Google, whatever you search, whatever words you put into Google, those are keywords. So you want to make sure that you put keywords on your website that have a lot of search volume, meaning a lot of people search for it. Because you might think that this is a good keyword for your business, but if nobody searches for that keyword, it doesn't really do any good. So you want to use different tools like the Google Keyword Planner. It's a free tool from Google show you how many people actually search for that keyword every single month. So then you could say, okay, this is a good one, or maybe I should use the singular or the plural or a synonym or some variation that if you're using a singular, you might only get a hundred searches. If you use a plural, you might get 10,000 searches. It has a big right. impact. So it's really important to do the research on what keywords you want to focus on. Okay. And that is um, um, true. I've noticed when I started, um, I'm only a year in, and then um, I'm on all platforms. But when I create my content at the beginning, I will come up with my, you know, my, of course, I have my own hashtag. And then um, I will come up with hashtags that I would like guess that, you know, would, you know, pertain to the content. But um, I started using Google Trends and um, I will pull up Google Trends. And then when I think of a hashtag, I'll look it up on Google Trends or compare it. It's like if I put it together or not, per se. And um, I see a different results just, you know, taking that time out to do that. Uh, what was the name of the other site that you um, gave us again? Yeah, so Google Trends is to show you when people search for like a keyword. So like if you put into Google Trends like Halloween, you could see like, okay, nobody searches for it. In January, right. February, March, April, May, June, July, August, maybe a little bit, September, October, giant spike. Then November just drops down. So like trying to show you like seasonality, which is a great one to check. Then there's another one called the Google Keyword Planner, which shows how many people search for that keyword every single month. So it kind of just averages it out for you. So Google Trends is a little bit more showing you month over month, but the Keyword Planner, like as long as you're not selling anything seasonal, like if your podcast is talking about something topical, like some newsworthy thing, then Google Trends might impact it. But if you're just trying to rank for evergreen content, which means it'll just stay valid forever for the most part until things change, but that one's going to be a little bit more better in the Google Keyword Planner. You put one keyword in there, it's going to show you hundreds of other variations of that word. And it'll show you how many people search for that word every single month. Okay. Okay. I like that. Now you have your local SEO. Um, again, as he explained but in the beginning of SEO, what would it mean to put the local and as far as a local SEO and what would be the effect of that? Well, local would be if you're a local business, like a restaurant or anything with a storefront, you want to, rank locally for where you're located about people coming in. Or if you're like a plumber, you want to rank for that service area that your city or the surrounding maybe five, 10 mile radius. So trying to get you up for when people search for things like plumber near me or restaurant nearby or Italian food or Chinese food, whatever it is they're putting in there. If you're searching for those type of business, keywords, Google's going to show like a five mile radius. Sometimes they'll go like 10 or 15 miles, but they usually don't go too far out because right. they want to show you stuff that's close by. So they'll, whatever's closest by and has the best marketing or SEO done, they'll rank at the top of Google Maps and also trying to get you up on the Yelp and other places or even on Google when people just search, trying to get your website ranked up there. So it's a few different things. It's a little bit more work because now you're adding all these other places. Now, instead of just ranking your website, 
going to rank your website, but we're also going to rank you on Google Maps. So it's an extra layer, but it gives you more exposure and visibility. Makes sense. Now, um, uh, from your clients that you have, uh, say, out of 10 business owners, how many would you say out of 10 that that are aware of all this that you're just explained already? Most are pretty aware if I talk to okay. them. But okay. if they're not talking to me before that, then most of them don't really know too much about the SEO. A few do, but once I start working together with them as clients, and they usually know because I explain what needs to be done, but business owners don't always see the full value of SEO until they realize everyone's online and everyone's searching on Google. Well, the majority of people are searching on Google. And if you're not there, competitors are up there taking that traffic away from you or someone else is up there taking that traffic from you. Right. And then, you know, in our, in my, in the city of Las Vegas, it's a lot since it is, like you said, everything is online uh, where you have here in this city, a lot of, um, old traditional brick and mortars that's not used to that. Um, say here's a lot of shops here is, does well, never, you know, probably have three pictures and that's it and have the same pictures for years. So, so um, right here out here is, is, is funny that I run into a lot that has no clue or need that help. And um, there's that crowd that's already aware of it, but that just need an enhancement or more, you know, knowledge of it. Like I started mine solely online. I've never had a brick and mortar, but I deal with a lot of brick and mortars um, that have no clue or even not even on social media at all, um, but are, you know, well off at doing with their brick and mortar, but don't understand they're leaving money on the table without having this knowledge. Yep. There's a lot that if they're not online, yeah, I think where where are people looking for you? Are they going to be going to a physical store? Some people might, but it's a lot easier to just pick up your phone, search, or go on the computer and just connect that way. So you'll still get some people, but the majority of the people nowadays are just all online with their cell phones. It's too easy. Now, what includes with the services that you have for the social media marketing? Oh, that one's to help grow your social presence. So trying to build up a presence and get you more of an audience organic marketing on social media, trying to get you more followers or more likes or whatever platform you're on. If you're on just trying to grow your audience and help you without spending money on ads. So trying to just tap into that organic type of marketing on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, LinkedIn, whatever platform that your audience is on, trying to get you in front of the right people at the right time. Okay. Now, um, this can be available um, if that um, business is on all platforms, correct? Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. So if they're on all of them, but you really need to be on where your audience is at. You don't need to be on everything. You need to be where your audience is at. Otherwise, you're going to spread yourself too thin and it becomes a lot of work trying to post on everything. So just got to take a step back and think, if you're looking for your product or service, where would you go? That's where you need to be. You don't need to be everywhere. You just need to be where your audience would be. Okay, makes sense. Now let us know about your press release service. I'll help people get press releases and write them and distribute them and get more exposure online. The more places that Google sees you, the more trust Google is going to give you and the higher you're going to be able to rank on Google. So press releases are another way just to get visibility and exposure for your business and get people more eyeballs on your content. Now, with um with the services all that we uh, went through and listed, if a company just needed one or two of those services, are they available? Or I know they can get all if needed, but what if they just needed one or two of those services? Are they available to take advantage of one or two? Mm, yeah, it's not a one size fits all. So you don't do everything. You just do what's ever applicable. If you're not a local business, we don't need to focus on local. If, if you are a local business, we need to focus heavily on local because we want to be on the maps and things like that. But it's just trying to figure out who you are or where your audience is at and trying to get you in front of them at the right time. And you're not limited to any area, are you? No, no. Open to any for the most part. Yes. Brandon, um, owner and operator of uh, SEO optimizers. Now, um, could you please give um, my audience your social media handles and uh, website also? Yeah. So everyone that's listening or watching, I create a special gift for them. If they go to my website, seooptimizers.com, that's S-E-O-O-P-T-I-M-I-Z-E-R-S.com forward slash gift. They can find that there along with my contact information and all that information there. Oh, yes, yes. Now, um, 
what would you say would be the timeline if one would get with you and say, I get the whole package? What would be the timeline you would give to start seeing results that impacts? Well, with SEO, it takes about six months. There's no real speeding that up. Unfortunately, it just takes time for Google to trust you, but you'll start moving up right away within the first couple months. But to really move up, it takes some time. And it just depends on the competitiveness. If you're selling t-shirts, a lot of competition, it might take a year or two because you're competing against like Target and Walmart and Amazon and Costco and all these big, big corporations there. They're probably spending tens of thousands of dollars on an SEO campaign. Whereas mm. if you're a small or local business and you don't have much competition, it'll move a lot quicker. So it just depends on how competitive it is and how much SEO has already been done to your website versus the competitors. Cause it's not one size fits all. We're not trying to beat Google. It's impossible to beat Google. Google changes every single day, but we can see who's on that first page of Google and how much SEO have they done and how can we do a better job of it? Right. I love it. I love it. I thank you, Brandon, uh, for your wisdom. I appreciate that. Um, it's much needed. Um, before you get out of here, we're going to um, get a little personal with this or that. It's one of my favorite games with my guests. And then after that, we're going to see how very, very Vegas you are. Uh, when the last time you've been out here to Vegas, Brandon? Uh, about a couple months ago. I live in Los Angeles, so. I know. <laughs> <Bye. laughs> All right. So with our, this or that, we're going to start off with Brandon, owner and operator of SEO Optimizers. Uh, with this or that, your go-to, would it be a Mac or a PC? The Mac. The Mac. Okay. okay. Do you operate with both? No, I used to, but once I got a Mac, it's just so much faster. So <laughs> I realized, yeah, to cut the PC out of the Mac makes it way easier and more efficient to work. But yes, okay. So the next one, um, your preference, and I knew you was from LA. I'm also from LA. Um, now, would you prefer a day on the beach or a day at the lake? The beach don't really have a lake, so the beach <laughs> is always good. Can't go wrong right. with the beach down here. It's the best escape, but. I live by a lake. Maybe I'd say a lake, but right. And I was about to say, if he says a lake, he's a driver. He likes yeah. to drive. <laughs> there are no lakes around, or not many. All right. Now, um, you have a podcast too, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You do. What is your podcast? You 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 got to come on, Brandon. You can't hold out on us. Let the audience know your podcast. Yeah. No. It's if they search my name, Brandon Leibowitz. They'll find that, and it's just. Talking about different digital marketing strategies, how to do like SEO, Instagram, Facebook, Google Analytics, kind of all the stuff we kind of touched on, but individual beautiful. episodes about each one. Beautiful, beautiful. Now, um, when you're listening to podcasts, do you um, listen on a platform of Spotify or Apple? Uh, Spotify. Music okay, Spotify. Spotify. All yeah. right. Have, have you um, tried Good Pods yet? Which one was it? Good Pods. Mm-mm, no. Uh-uh. It's a nice platform. It's pretty good. You should try it out and get yours uploaded on there. Also, good pods. Uh, it's pretty out. good. Yeah, they're doing. They're growing real fast. Also, nice. all right. Appreciate that. Now, uh, yes, it is. <laughs> now, uh, very, very Vegas. We're gonna see how very, very Vegas you are. And I'm sure you are. You're right next door. Um, what year was the city of Las Vegas found? Was it 1910, 1893? Or 1905? Maybe 1910. Not too sure. <laughs> Good job. It was 1905. Close. Almost yeah. there. <laughs> Actually, Las Vegas was officially uh, founded as a city on May 15, 1905. Wow. Uh, the, state, the first settlers were Mormons from Salt Lake City in the mid-1800s. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it goes yeah. back. That's some history. It right does. There. It does. It does. But we got. Um, I know the gambling was legal in 1930, so that's um nice little gap, also. Yeah, it's big yeah. enough. <laughs> <laughs> Before that, <laughs> that's right. Well, I, I appreciate your time, Brandon. Brandon, um, my audience, let them know again where can they get some of the wisdom from your social media handles before we head out, and also that podcast, sir. Yeah, so they go to my website, SEO Optimizers. It's S E O O P T I M I Z E R S dot com forward slash gift. They can find all my contact information and podcast episodes if they just search on YouTube or any of the platforms. 
except for the one that you mentioned. I'll have to jump on that, the good network. But they search my name, Brandon Leibowitz, so they'll find all that stuff up there as well. Right. And audience, I want to thank you guys for tuning in. And of course, Brandon's link is in the show notes. And believe me, I will be clicking the link myself once we're done with this session. Um, Brandon, I want to thank you for joining me tonight. Appreciate you. Yeah, thanks for having me on today. All right. You guys take care and I'll see you guys next week. Thank you, Brandon.